and welcome to another Cheeky Girl Creations video. So today I will be doing a terrarium tour as well as maintenance video. So I've got all of my terrariums in here. I've got my two coniferous ones which are like these larger ones as well as a moss terrarium and all of my jar terrariums and if you would like to see some of the footage of me making um the Venus flycatcher terrarium as well as the moss terrarium I do have some of that in my vlog in my latest vlog so I will link that in an eye card in the top right hand corner if you would like to see so let's start with the Venus flycatcher and um, you can see the top view at the moment I will make sure and do like a bit of a side and front view um, which I'll like put somewhere in the video so you can kind of see like the different angles and how it's changed since um i first made it and i will put up the dates to when i made it i would say this terrarium as well as the pitcher and moss terrarium are about a month old um by the time i'm filming this so i'll make sure and put up a photo of when i first made it so you can see like the differences um and yes yeah, so i've got a few things i want to point out um, I have been hand pollinating the Venus flycatcher flowers. You can see that I've got five stalks. One of them sent off like one and then the other sent off two stalks each. And one of them is flowering. I'll bring that into the camera. But I won't be hand pollinating it today on video because it's not ready to pollinate yet. I will take a photo of it as it is now. And then I'll try to remember to take a photo of it when it's ready to pollinate so you can kind of see the difference. Um, yeah, I'll try to get a photo of that. My camera's not great at um, like micro shots, but I'll make sure to do that so that you guys can see. But I do have some seeds to harvest because on the first stalk is ready to harvest. And then like the second stalk, I can see two of them getting ready. Um, so yeah, so they all flowered at like slightly different points so I'll be kind of collecting seeds for a while and what I'll do is as I collect them I will plant them I want to like get a few Venus flytrap seedlings as well as if I get like loads of plants I'll probably sell some just because not plants sorry well plants and seeds but the plants take quite a while to grow so at first if I get loads of seeds I'll probably sell some because they're better to like to be used straight off and um yeah, so I will harvest some of these on video today and again I'll take a photo of it so you can kind of see like the difference between one that's ready and one that isn't and I am not a botanist or anything so this is very much just a new hobby that started off um, and I'm absolutely loving it so I don't know everything but I just thought I would just show you guys because that's what I'm into at the moment. So, um, another few things I want to mention is that some of the mosses are doing really well and some not so much. And like this lichen stick is actually doing really well. It's loving it. Um, this lichen, like the side that gets the most sun is nice and yellow and then the side that isn't kind of is like a bluey grey. So, it's nice and happy, this lichen stick. And this moss in front here is pretty happy. I'll zoom in so you guys can like see a little bit easier. So this one is nice and happy and when I water I tend to water on top of this and this stone and the reason I water on top of like the stones um, and not like directly onto like the dirt is just to kind of stop erosion and stuff and not to like beat down the plants too much with the water. So that's pretty happy. This is okay. It's a bit dry. Um, I was kind of waiting to do this video before I gave it another water so once I give it a nice drink um, I tend to leave about an inch of water in there because Venus flycatchers do like a more of a boggy environment I will um, it'll like green up a little bit more this moss isn't doing too badly on the side here it's not too bad this moss is really happy I would say this is probably the happiest moss it's sent off like um, I'm not too sure what to refer to as these little bits I don't think it's spores but I think this is how moss reproduces on well some mosses at least so as I kind of sent off all this stuff I've got another lichen stick in the corner there that's nice and happy um, I've got like some moss on a rock here again really happy and then this moss came originally with the Venus flytrap um, 
and so I made sure to put the original moss in with like the coniferous plant it came with and it's really happy like there was barely any when I first put in but now it's like super happy and I think that's yeah that is actually some of it the original moss there and again it's sent off more of those like shoot things um so yeah I would say in here like the moss is kind of like some is happy some is kind of in between and some not so much like this feathery moss I think it prefers a closed environment because this is an open terrarium because it's a coniferous plant and they need to catch flies and stuff. Um, I hope the wind isn't too loud. I think some kind of like mini storm is coming in. So yeah, I think the feathery moss kind of prefers a slightly more closed environment if it's to be in a terrarium. Um, because like there's some green but it's pretty dry and I keep on spritzing it. I pretty much spritz daily. I just like have some rainwater. Oh, and that's another thing. Only water your coniferous plants with rainwater because tap water will kill them. And moss and stuff also prefers the rainwater as well. So um, yeah, I tend to spritz it like every day. I just have some rainwater in a spray bottle and I'll just go in and like just spritz directly onto the moss. Um, and like, it doesn't seem to like it much, but in my other two rooms, which you'll see after this one, you'll see like the feathery moss is actually a lot happier in the closed terrarium. So now that I know that for future terrariums, it's better to have it in a closed environment. And I did also have some moss on this rock, which again gets directly watered, but it's, again, it's not very happy. It's kind of dying off. So, um, yeah, there's a few where it's really happy, some not so much, but, I can always take them out and replace it with some, like you can see there's some more feathery moss in the front here that came in with some star moss. Star moss is pretty happy, feathery moss again not so much. So um, that's the thing with a terrarium though, it's supposed to kind of like mimic a like a natural environment, like a bit of a mini world. So things die off, things survive, you know it all depends. And um, oh I also wanted to touch on there's been a few stowaways so there's a millipede in here that I've I've noticed as well as I've also noticed a water snail which is great because um, that'll help clean up the algae that's kind of settled in the sand what I think I should have done is when I washed the sand I should have poured some hot water over it to kind of kill off anything but I didn't do that so now I know um, so what I do is I just kind of just clean off the sand and I just kind of pick up pick off the algae like I'll use um, tweezers and stuff and just kind of remove some of the algae so that it doesn't kind of like get overrun so that's something I just have to go in every now and again to do that um, and yeah so it doesn't get like too much and there's also springtails in here you can't really see them I find I get I see them a lot more in the closed terrariums like the jar terrariums than I do in this one but I know there's definitely in there because like, you can sometimes kind of see from the side um so yeah I think that's pretty much everything that's covered with this one um I'm happy with how it's going every now and again I'll just have to prune some like dead um leaves so like I can see a dead Venus flytrap leaf here which it's kind of tricky to get into. Actually, what I found is that Venus flytrap leaves seem pretty fragile. Which kind of surprised me, I gotta say. Um, right, so I can get that. Oh, and another thing that I wanted to mention is... It is important for them to get a decent amount of sun. Um and you know that they're getting enough sun if like the inside of the catcher is um red so you can see how like there's red on a lot of the venus fly traps that's good because it means it's getting sun so what i tend to do is i put them out on the deck if it's a nice sunny day i'll put them out on the deck um, so they can catch a nice amount of sun and as well it'll give them a better chance of catching flies and insects and stuff um, at some point we did get like some ants in the conservatory which was pretty useful so I would just try to like catch them and um, and like pop them in the terrarium and hope that the 
Venus flytraps would catch them. So yeah, it's really tricky to try to get in, especially with the stalks in. And what I think I'll do is once all the flower stalks have like had their seeds collected and stuff, I will um I'll make a cover for it and I'll show you what kind of cover I'll make. And what I'll do is I'll cover them at night and then uncover them in the day so they don't get too used to being in a closed environment but just enough so that um, they can keep some of the moisture in for like the moss and stuff to kind of give it a better chance so I'm not going to throw away like this moss here like I really do like the stick that it's attached to um, and I'll wait and see because if that then kind of helps it then I'll know but um, for future reference I won't do any more like open terrariums with that moss in it because I can tell it doesn't really like that and of course keep like pruning it um not only helps it it helps to make the plant look a lot nicer but also then the plant isn't like wasting energy kind of sending it into these um dead leaves and what I'm going to do because like I've been watching um I've been watching Serpa designs a lot he's got great like terrarium builds and aquarium builds and all sorts and um what he does is when he prunes and maintains his terrariums he'll like chop the um leaves up really small and then put them back into the terrarium is this one dead no that seems fine fine see this okay so yeah so he'll chop them up and then just kind of bury them back in the dirt so that's what I'm going to do because then if you like prune it and then throw it away like put it in your compost or something is like leaving the environment but you want like the nutrients to kind of stay in though Venus flytraps don't need very nutrient soil because it's in peat soil so I actually might just check that before and like put up a note whether I do or not. So I'll just leave them off to the side for now and I'll talk to my mum about that because well my mum's very good at like growing and stuff so I can get or I can google that. So I will put up a note on screen if I do ch chip them up and put them in there. Um. So yeah so I didn't really have to do too much maintenance in here. I will give it a good water though. So I've just got this like nice watering can and I'm just going to oop, I'm just going to pour on top of that moss that moss rock this moss rock that seems to be dying try to give it like a bit of life right and I will just see like if that's good enough what I might do is I also might wipe the glass because I find it's gotten a bit smudgy since I last did it and um, yeah so I'm gonna add a little bit more water because I want I wanted to have a good drink so I wanted to kind of come up a little bit more okay that's good that might actually be a bit too much but that's fine it does like they do like a boggy environment so yeah and the Venus flytrap and the pitcher plant trap are the only ones that I like add water to because they're open so of course it's all evaporating and stuff um, and the moss one I just kind of spritz every now and again but um, I'll talk more about that in a little bit so I will show you guys some front close-ups I will also give the glass a bit of a clean and it's pretty easy to clean the glass when it comes to like this one I can go in pretty easily and like just make sure not kind of touch the water level just kind of wipe up any of those splashes and you can also go in with like a microfiber cloth and um, really make sure it's like clean but it really shouldn't be too dirty it's just kind of maybe where like I might have touched it especially like carrying it because at the moment it's still in the conservatory so yeah and it's times like this when 
it will be useful if like the stalks weren't so tall because the stalks are very tall you can see that they've gone right over this um because then I could cover it and just kind of let all that moisture kind of soak in and then just uncover it the next day so yeah that's what I'll do and I think then the moss would be a little bit more healthy and happy but then you'll see that um in the picture one actually the moss isn't doing too bad so i think it's just the moss i picked but um that's the nice thing with this you know it's all about experimenting and stuff and seeing what works out so let's do a front and like side view oh and i totally forgot um that i wanted to harvest these seeds now this one didn't seem to pollinate very well like nothing really seemed to have happened um what i was able to tell that if if they like close and were like really fat then um the pollination was like a success but if it closed up and was like really small like imagine like a flower bud then it wasn't so that's how i was able to kind of tell whether i did a good job or not and i think they can all open up this stalk is pretty much like a bit of an experiment like the experiment one um which is like actually why it's really useful that um they kind of open staggered because then i could kind of like experiment and see like if i got it right so as far as I'm aware, I think it's just supposed to, oh yeah, like fall off really easily. Because like I think the way that um, it kind of like gets shaken out in the wild, so. Let's move this. So I've just got a container here with like a paper towel in it. So I can see the seeds because the seeds are tiny. So you can see those little like black dots okay and then i think i'll just no i don't know if i'm if like if the fact that i'm having to kind of flick them out means that they weren't completely ready they were kind of opened up so i think that they might have been and that's kind of pretty much all because i don't know if i really like pollinated the first set very well so that's kind of all that's come out because the others, like, especially the second stalk, are, like, super fat. So those are the seeds. Really tiny. Um, let's see. Mm, that may not be completely ready. This kind of looks like it's bursting out, but I'm not sure. Maybe I could just do all of them and just see. Um... Okay, now I'm getting seeds out. And what I'll do is like I'll just like then put them in a Ziploc bag. So I don't like lose them. That's all. So again, like because these weren't as fat as like the others. Like at all. Okay, and then I'm just going to cut the stalk. I'll cut it really low. Let me just see if this one is has anything in it. Because it was so small that I don't think this was a success. Oh, well there's one seed. So yeah, so... Because the others, like the much fatter like seed pods, I can see that... I can actually kind of see through them and see that there's quite a few seeds in there. So as I said, this was pretty much a practice, but I'm guessing that the other stalks will have a lot more. So um, I'll, I'll sow, sow these pretty soon. I'm just going to put something over it. And um, yeah, I'll pretty much, I'll probably sew them today. So um, I'll try to remember to get that on camera. And then, so the plant doesn't waste any more of its energy, like putting into this stalk, I'm going to cut it. I'm going to cut it nice and low. 
making sure not to cut any of the leaves there and well yeah it's pretty much it and you can kind of see let's see if I can zoom in these these here are like some new leaves so I've got one two three four new leaves coming up this leaf is pretty new here because it hasn't actually opened up and doesn't have those like kind of spiky things coming out of it so um because when I first put it in they were pretty stressed as most plants are after you transplant them but the fact that I'm constantly seeing like new growth like this one's showing no new growth this one did send off a few new leaves but it's kind of slowed down on that and I think that's because it's pulling like all of its energies into like its flower stalks and the same with this one but I think more was coming up in this because the flower stalk was like almost done I'm guessing this is all guessing um so yeah but no they're all like doing pretty well and most importantly the venus fly traps are doing really well um because yeah because i haven't had the best of luck with venus fly traps my first plant was really nice and healthy and this can go outside because they're from like i think they're from north america so they can deal with like english temperatures like i'm in the south so it'll be pretty good um so my mom said to put it outside and then literally the next, the morning after, a blackbird kind of like attacked it and killed my plant. I don't know why. I think it was going after the moss that was in the pot. Who knows? So, um, yeah, I'm really glad that I have three healthy fly traps and I'll be collecting seeds. And um, as long as the seeds catch, I will keep you guys updated on that. Um, probably mostly on social media. And you can kind of see like there is some like kind of floating stuff on the water and I find it's easier to kind of scoop it up on the water with the Venus flytrap because I think the, the algae is just a bit more sticky and then I'll scoop it up and then just kind of wipe that on a paper towel but this isn't too bad um I cleaned up the algae before so I don't really have to do too much cleaning of that so on to the pitcher plant so here is the pitcher plant terrarium um now this one the moss is a lot healthier so um again i've got a few different mosses in here but i've also got some lichen so i've got some lichen on this stick here again very healthy um i've got some lichen on this stick here as well again very happy um this moss here is very happy um it's gotten a little bit dry but that's just because i was waiting to water it on this video so but normally it's like a lot greener than this um, and I think it's because it's so close to the water, it couldn't be happier. The original moss, again, is really happy. There's some, like, moss on this rock here, which gets watered on top of this mossy rock and this moss here. I can just kind of move that. Really happy. Again, it sent off those kind of weird things. Um... And this one, the moss is actually growing onto the earth now, which is really good. So, and I've realized you can tell new growth on a, on moss by like the tips would be like really light. Like, so say it's a more of a richer green, the tips are much lighter, like very like noticeable, almost white. Um, so you, I can tell that there's new growth on this. So that's really good. So that's really happy. Um, there's also some moss behind here. This one I think I just need to spritz more, but again, it's pretty happy. I think I just need to remember to spritz it more because um, it's kind of blocked by the picture, so I kind of forget that. The ones closer to watering is really happy. And again, the original pitcher plant moss that came with it, happy, really, really happy. So that's all the different kind of moss. The original pitcher plant moss I kind of put behind it as well. It's really pretty. I actually really like this moss. It looks a bit like a star, so I really like that look. And then there's also some like elf cup lichen and I put that in here with the pitcher plant because like I thought elf cups, pitchers, it kind of like matched the aesthetic. And um, is this stick shifted? Alright, um, yeah, they're really happy. I Again, I'll spritz on top of the lichen, on top of the moss that's not getting directly watered on. So I would say this is my happiest, like actually... I wouldn't say this is my happiest. Well, in a way, the coniferous plant ones are completely open. So I'm going to say this is the happiest because the moss and the pitcher plant and the lichen are happy. This again, same problem with the algae. Um, 
I'm gonna try to pick it off it's really difficult to clean because it's like sand um but there's like all on top of like the rocks and stuff um and in here the only stowaway I've noticed is a millipede actually that wasn't a stowaway I did put the millipede directly in there so um yeah there's a millipede in all of the large ones just to like kind of help keep things clean as well as springtails I made sure to add those in and now for the pitcher plant so as you can see it's really nice and blousy I'm constantly getting new growth on the pitcher plant which is really good um yeah this this is all new growth this is all new growth it comes up closed and then it slowly opens so I've got this one coming up might open soon there's one behind there that might open soon and there's two pitcher plants in here but I wasn't able to separate them and they say um, from what I've researched you're not supposed to separate them until like it's winter so I don't know if I will if I find it's gotten too big for the terrarium then I will separate it leave one in here then like pot one up maybe make another terrarium I would love an excuse to be honest um, but yeah the pitcher plant is super happy lots of new growth I haven't noticed any like flowering but they do say that pitcher plants flower later than Venus flytraps I think Venus flytraps kind of start off in March which would make sense because when I got it, it was sending off a flower shoot. Um, and pictures, I think, flower from like like May and June. So there might be, but it may not be um, to its full maturity because I think it's like four years in, then it'll flower. So I don't know how old this plant is. I'm hoping it's its fourth year because I would love to collect seeds. So again, get some seedlings and stuff. But um, I don't know. So yeah really happy super happy and i really like this one it's yeah i really like how this one looks so there's not really any maintenance to be honest because i did have some like kind of stowaway plants growing out from the lichen and the moss but i had already like pulled those out because they were getting a bit big what i would tend to do is i kind of let them grow until it's starting to kind of take away from the look of the terrarium then i pull them out because most of the time i'm pretty sure those plants are going to get pretty big um, yeah, so what I'm going to try to do, I'm going to try to kind of clean up, I'm going to try to clean up this algae before I water because it wasn't like as, like, sticky and, well, gross, um, as like the Venus flytrap one because the Venus flytrap one I was able to just kind of go in with a tweezer, kind of grab a section of algae and then it would just kind of pull up as one, which is really pleasant. <laughs> Um, and I also, I won't be trimming off any of the pictures. I mean, this one is looking kind of old. I might trim, hmm. I might trim this one just because it's like the edge is a bit brown looking. And just because there's so much new growth, I don't want everything to get like too smushed. So I might trim that. I'll trim it before I start to overthink too much. I'm just trying to make sure that I don't get any any other picture. Okay. There. So it just had like some browning here. Um, and it was pretty much fine to be honest. But I'm just doing that just to kind of give all this new growth some room. Because I'm noticing that they are getting a bit squashed. So yeah, I don't think I'll... That's kind of around the edge, but I won't trim that. So yeah, I'll just leave that, and then that can this can kind of grow into the space. And by the time it opens up, that space that's opened up will um, not matter too much. So yeah, let's try to clean up some of this algae. And another thing I wanted to mention is with these pictures, you do have to fill in its water um, because, like, in nature, it would get filled up from rain. But of course, it's not getting rained on in this terrarium. So I just go in with a syringe and I'll show you and I just kind of fill it up. Um, I don't fill it completely to the top. Um, I would say I like fill about two thirds of the pitcher, maybe just under, not too much, so that it can digest whatever flies and stuff it catches really easily. A, a really cool thing that happened um, when we had like ants appear in the conservatory I don't know what happened like I don't know if it was that the pictures was giving off a lovely scent or what because again I was like kind of catching them 
and then and then kind of pulling them in the terrarium then the next morning i came down and my mum like pointed out that some of the pictures were full like full of all these ants so obviously during the night it was very busy and catching all of these ants so that was really cool so i know that um should be well fed i haven't really fed it with anything else i mean if we catch like a fly um then we'll pop it in there but yeah i don't know if i'm doing this very well Just trying to get off some of the algae. Um, but yeah, I've only noticed the uh, millipede. A water snail would also be useful in here, again, to combat the algae. I'm just going to try to scrape some of that off of the silicone as well. And again, Pretty much daily I will um, give everything like a spritz um, and I only will water it like if once the water level drops down then I'll water it. So I just want to show you how I would fill up the pitcher and there's quite a few of them that's kind of dry. What I would like to see is kind of like put them out maybe when there's like light drizzle um, but April was like dry. We had like no rain which is strange for England and spring. Um, so I'll just fill it up a bit. And this is a pretty big one, so that took like a full syringe, but then I will just leave it like that. I'm, I don't want to bring it up too much. Um, and that just will help them digest whatever they find. So I will show you guys a like a front and side view. Um, and actually it's quite a bit of algae more like on the sides, again, like to the back of it where it gets quite a bit of light. Um, but yeah, and I also do put this out to get some sun because once I started to put it out to get some sun the pictures got really nice and red so yeah that was a really good sign um but yeah this is a really happy terrarium so let's do the close-ups and then we can do the moss one so this is the moss terrarium and it has a lid now my mum made this out of acetate um it just kind of folds over and then there's a few holes like punched on either side so it's not fully closed um closed sorry because like things are sort of evaporate but i don't really need to like water it too much um the only time i i add water is just pretty much a spritz here and there so again this is a very happy terrarium and there has been a few changes a few things that's been added since i made it so um like the ferns are doing really nicely like when I first put the ferns in they were a bit dry but those leaves have like been pruned off and more just keep on coming up so that's really good there's constant like new fronds coming up so I'm really happy about that they're really nice and happy there's a few ferns there's one two three and they don't get too big but if they got a bit too big I would just prune them back no biggie um, as you can see there's a few trespassers or stowaway should I say that have come in the moss and I'll be taking those out because they're getting a bit big now and I'm not really liking the look of them anymore and then another thing that I've added is some liverwort so this like this liverwort this liverwort underneath like the fern and back here are like the same um, and then this I think is a slightly different liverwort um, now these three I wish I'd taken a photo when I first put them in because they are they look like they want to take over the terrarium to be honest I mean they're they're literally climbing up my my fisherman here um, I'm yet to give him a name actually I'm still trying to think of one but yeah they're climbing up the, the moss that came with them is so happy it's a really pretty moss as well but yeah the liverwort is just like it has let me see tripled in size i'm going to say it was a lot smaller when it put in when i put it in um it was flat as well and now it's like kind of reaching up and it's kind of crazy the back here same thing here is kind of like starting to go over the moss and also here is kind of like you'll see like in the close-up it's got these like way kind of like umbrella looking flowery things i don't know what they are i'm guessing that's how kind of how they like spread but again 
I don't know. It's kind of freaking me out. Just because the way that they're just growing so like... Yeah. Kind of going crazy. This one was kind of found like next to a river. So I put it here and every now and again I'll just like take my syringe. Which I sometimes use to add like extra water to moss in some of the terrariums. Um, if needs be. And I just like put a few squirts on it. And, um, yeah, just to keep that, since I don't water it regularly like the others, I just kind of just water those. But the others are absolutely fine. They're like, they're totally loving it to pieces. Um, and again, I only use rainwater. I only use rainwater in all of the terrariums. You can use rainwater or distilled water in terrariums. So, um, we have a bottle of rainwater outside. So, yeah, that's what I use. So... The liverworts are happy. This one's kind of growing a bit slower. I don't know if it's very happy. I'll have to see. But these are loving it. I've also got this really cool moss like here. Um, this came in really dry, but it's like growing up nice and tall. I haven't seen any new growth from it. Actually, kind of from the front, I can kind of see some new growth. Actually, wait a second. Is this all the same? Is this stuff the same moss? Hmm. I'll have to see as this stuff gets bigger. I'm not too sure now. But yeah, this is loving it. Um, this log here, like all this moss on this log came with it. And um, before it was pretty much like in this patch here. I'll use a ske skewer so my hands aren't blocking it. Like in this patch here. And now it's this, a bunch of new growth. There's a patch of new growth here. Um, it's spreading across the log. Before there was a bit of an empty space. Now it's spreading across all here. Kind of going up on the fisherman's leg. New growth. Um, this moss is really happy. This feather moss is happy too. This is a slightly different feather moss than what was in the um, Venus flycatcher. That's kind of like what the stowaways came in because there's some back here as well. And then this feather moss is the same as the Venus flycatcher moss and it's really happy. It's, it's, it's loving in here which is why I think it prefers a closed terrarium. A lot moist so... I'm glad about that. This moss on this rock, happy. This happy, actually everything's happy in here. Um, this moss is good as well. Now this moss, this like big patch of really hairy moss, it's kind of fussy. Um, it's kind of dry to the touch. I don't really need to add any water though. Um, there's quite a bit of condensation and I just added some there, but I can add a few like spritz on there and I'm not too worried about um, adding too much water to this since I do have the holes there to let evaporation happen but when I left this as a closed terrarium I was constantly having to spritz this it wasn't very happy at all it was always drying out really quickly but once I covered it over it was happy so again I think this prefers a closed terrarium and this is getting really nice and bushy um uh, there's a bit of new growth I can see some like really light tips so Yep, that's happy. Um, I don't know if there's new growth on here. I can't really spot any. There might be. I mean, I'm sure there are. I, actually, now that I look, I can see some lighter tips on this stick at the back here. Um, bring a bit forward for you. So, yeah. Everything is happy in here. Um, this rock here, again, there's some new growth. I can see kind of coming off the rock. This is kind of trying to come down. So is this. This moss on the log is like trying to come down on the rocks and stuff so yeah it's really cool i've also got springtails in here and i put a millipede in here as well um i just put one i didn't want to like overpopulate uh because i'm not sure like i don't know if what i put if i put two if it'll be too much for it but yeah sometimes you can see the springtails kind of coming up feeding on the sand which is pretty cool they don't show up in the others but i know they are in there because like from the side you can sometimes see it like on the side of the dirt or the back um and yeah oh i also have a lichen stick underneath here but you can't really see it because of the ferns um now this fern is i don't know it's, it's a bit crooked i don't even know what happened to this fern i think because it was kind of propped up against the glass but i'm not going to trim back any of the fern at the moment they're all nice and luscious and green and they're not looking too big and covering too much stuff up so i'm just gonna leave it um but yeah, so what I will do is at some point, if the liverwort gets a bit too much, I'll just kind of split it. Because I think I'll be able to 
get quite a bit of liverwort for like future terrariums from this terrarium just because the liverwort is growing so nicely and i'll also have to show you the underside of the liverwort because it kind of sends off these kind of strange hairs hair root thingies um very technical words i'm using here um which again i think is just that them kind of putting down quote unquote roots i don't think moss has roots um but i'm just saying that because that's like the easiest way for me to explain it but yeah really happy and again with closed terrariums when you open it if it smells like a woodland floor it's healthy and every time i open this it smells like a wooden floor and it's a really nice like rich dirt smell so it's happy in here now originally i did say i was going to use this for few, like seedlings like a venus flycatcher seedling and pitchers like if they flower um i don't know if i will because it's just pretty much becoming a moss terrarium because there's peat soil in here but i don't know if i will um and there's also some other moss coming up like there's one it's kind of covered up now by the liverwort that was kind of growing out of the log but it looks different from this like pointy feathery kind of moss so i don't know there's new stuff coming up i think there's one like here it's kind of crazy so i am going to pull these out um the soil is nice and moist so they'll come up really easy and i want to pull them out so that i get all the roots so they don't grow back um because at first they look pretty cute um but now they just seem to just be taking over the terrarium so i'm taking them out nice and easy and because the soil is so moist um they're coming up easily and again i actually i will also ask my mum if i should put it back in because since this just seems to be turning into a moss terrarium i probably can just chip it up and put it back into the terrarium so it keeps that and i can just kind of like maybe put it like behind like maybe like under this moss here as well to kind of create some more dirt um because that moss seemed to grow in dirt um yeah but no this this i would say is the most exciting terrarium just because there's so much going on i mean if it isn't the um liverwort looking like it literally wants to take over the terrarium and the world um it's just all the moss is just doing so well and like quite a bit changes so frequently that it's really fun to watch i can actually see another stowaway coming up here but i might leave that and because it's it's like the same as the others but because it's so small i might leave it, it they look quite cute when small and then i'll just plug them out when they grow up a bit more um and yeah it's it's a really happy terrarium i think this one is really doing the best out of all of um the larger ones now another thing i wanted to show you guys um and i'll have to move this camera angle a little bit but this log was kind of rotten like and i don't think you're really supposed to put that in terrariums but um it looked so nice that my mom collected it anyway and they had this kind of like black looking fungus thing on it so i thought maybe we we're going to get mushrooms and i it seemed like it maybe wasn't going to do any mushrooms um but then on the side there are a couple like oh gosh i've forgotten the word i'm gonna have to put it up on screen for like new growth of mushrooms and there's a mushroom on the side here so i'm going to show you guys that um but yeah it's a really happy terrarium so i'm going to show you guys the um side of the terrarium so you can see the mushroom and you can see like once um as long as the condensation kind of goes away you can see it through the lid quite easily oh and i can't remember if i mentioned but it's acetate um but it had just condensed a lot because i've moved into the studio and the temperature's kind of dropping and um it like it shows condensation like in the morning and like in the evenings um yeah so let's move to the side so i can show you guys the mushroom that's growing out of there i have no idea what kind of mushroom it is but it's really cool to see i would say this is definitely the most exciting oh and another thing it doesn't have as much algae in it because um there's a lot less sitting water so i think because of that there's like a little a tiny patch of algae but there was more but once i put the springtails in they just come out and like have a feeling frenzy on the sand so they they're doing really well in here they're keeping it 
pretty good oh another thing i wanted to say is that there was quite a bit of like mold kind of building up like kind of here on the log here but my mom said like one evening um some springtails were, like feeding frenzy feeding frenzy and it looks like they cleared it up so springtails are doing really well with cleanup on here they seem to be um they seem to be a tad overwhelmed than the other ones but i don't know i'm not gonna add anymore because i know there's a lot in there and i'll just kind of help keep down the algae in there and maybe at some point they'll um overcome it but they don't seem to come out as often they seem to stay in the soil more and i don't know if that's just because it's more open so the air is not as moist because with this one especially once the lid was on they came out more and in the jar terrariums i see them moving around like on top so maybe that's why which is why once like the i do cover the pitcher plant in some cling film at night i've started to do that recently and once the stalks when the Venus flycatcher are all gone, I'll start to do that. So maybe that'll help with the cleanup. So yeah, let's give you guys the side view. Okay, so here is the mushroom. Again, have no idea what it is. And I think because it's also so squished to the side, it'll be hard to identify. But that's the mushroom. Um, and that's the new growth. There's two of these this is the tallest one so i'm guessing this is going to um bloom seems like the wrong word i don't know why i've forgotten all the mushroom terms all of a sudden it's because i'm on camera um i'll put it up on screen though so you know what i mean but yeah that's the new growth there's another one kind of like behind it so yeah that's it right there um and there were some springtails because i kind of had to wipe the glass so you guys would be able to see but they've all run off now but yeah so you can see like at the side here there's like some new fronds coming up for like the ferns which is really cool um let's turn it around let's see how well you can see from the back because this terrarium is literally like the others aren't so interesting from the sides but this one has got like all angles is interest so you can see a bit of algae kind of um it's a bit tricky with the um with the reflection but you can see a bit of that because this this side is up, up against the window and then i'm hoping you can see the hairs that's coming off of the liverwort but there's like hairs coming down i'll also show you from the other side as well hairs coming down from it that um i'm guessing it's like their own kind of root system maybe that's how they like multiply not too sure But here you should be able to see it a lot easier. So like all this kind of like white, weird white stuff, that's not condensation. That is the liverwort. And yeah, it's so weird looking, kind of gross, but really fascinating. Um, yeah, it's really cool. It's really cool. You can even kind of see moss. Is that growing up? Or just I don't know the moss is just going crazy moss is absolutely loving this space and here are the weird kind of flower things I was talking about I'll also give like a close-up from the top but that's like the strange flower thingies that came up I noticed that I think yesterday like day before I'm filming this so yeah I do need to give this glass a bit of a clean that needs that needs a bit of a wipe oh there we go that's fixed so yeah liverwort is like nice and high up and um yeah it's doing it's doing really well and i feel as if i mean i can give it a spritz every now and again and i'm mostly doing that because it has holes on the top but i don't think it, the spritz are too like necessary to be honest it's a really happy terrarium and i'm really happy with it um and yeah, I, think, I would say this is like the most low maintenance. So let's do a quick zoom in so you guys can see the liver water a bit closer. And those little kind of starry uh, moss in between the liver water came with it. And I really like, I like the, the kind of delicate texture. 
that's the you see that the nice and feathery that and green that moss is so it's a lot happier that's the other one on the log And now I'll show you guys the jar terrariums. Um, yeah, let's go into the jar terrariums. So here are the jar terrariums. So these three are the original, and then these two were made um, a bit recently. Again, I'll put dates for the originals, and then the newer ones. So they're all slightly different sizes. Um, you would have seen some in the vlog, like these three. Um, and yeah, so these two probably won't need any maintenance. To be honest, one of them I know needs maintenance, but the others not so much. So let's start off with the ones that don't really need maintenance. Now these are closed terrariums. They have been opened um, a few times. Um, and again, they're really happy. I'm going to open them now. I don't mind too much opening them. I might just give them a spritz when I go back to close them. So this was made from like a peanut butter jar. Okay. Okay, so there again there's some feathery moss in here. Now it was a bit dry when I put it in, but it's greened up a lot more. So again, I think it's pretty happy here. Um this moss is really happy. It's like lovely and green. There's some lichen in here. Oh, we have a stowaway here. That could be plucked out. Little little grass or something. These are like uh, these are so tricky to kind of get into. I had to use tweezers a lot to um to place things. So um yeah, there's some star moss. Again, very happy. There's some lichen. More star moss. This is slightly different. Oop, we've got another stowaway. Let's get that out. Oops. Might have to use the tweezers. Let's see if I can get a good hole with this. Oh, I don't think I got the root on that one. No, I don't think I got the root on that one. But that's okay. If it grows back up, I can just take it out. Um, and then I've got a, oh gosh, Tradescan or chia this purpley plant um this is a tropical plant you can actually find it from um like in trinidad which is where i'm from so i put that in there it's quite it's humid loving i mean it's from a tropical country um so yeah that's doing really well it started off a lot shorter and is growing really nicely and this is something that can be pruned because they are grown from cuttings so if it gets a bit too big it can get pruned um but yeah everything is really happy in here again i see springtails running around every now and again and um i want to see if i can show you guys the kind of root so if you can see i hope you can see that it's really tricky with the reflection but this little root um is coming out of the purple plant so that's showing that it's really happy and it has gotten a lot taller. And again, I will like show you guys kind of some side views because like this, I don't know what this root is. I don't know where that's from. I don't know if that's a stowaway that just hasn't showed itself yet. I'm not too sure, but I could tell us a root. Um, this doesn't have peat, peat soil in it. So there's no coniferous plant. So this is just a kind of soil mix that um, I made from like some like compost and like leaf litter and stuff um yeah so happy terrarium and this one actually does have um a millipede in it that stole away i didn't put it in there um yeah i just saw it one time just crawling around because i did have to redo it because i put too much soil the first time and again you can see when springtails move around in this a few times 
so that's a really happy one and i would say let me see maybe i've done this one has been around for about three weeks give or take probably around there um because this was made these were made like after the coniferous ones so this one is a nice tall one i've got a fern in here fern's nice and happy um i can see a new fawn coming up so that's good news star moss is pretty happy in there i've got some lichen in there that seems pretty happy um i can see some mold which isn't bad that does happen when you first like make your terrarium that's why you put springtails and stuff to kind of keep it down so i'm not too worried um there's just a, like a few patches that i'm sure the springtails will like fix up in the fatter one not so much um star moss is happy got some other like i don't really know what to call this kind of moss this moss pretty happy we've got some lichen in there and then this moss in front really likes it um and yeah it's again pretty happy terrarium um there's enough water in here i'm not really going to spritz them up and they're not open for that long um so i'm not going to give them a spritz but as long as they condensate in the morning and the evening and are clear throughout the day they have enough water so yeah they're nice and happy um i don't see as much springtails in here but i'm sure they are because i know i put them in So yeah, there's no stowaways in this one, so nothing really to um, take out. Oh, actually no, that one, that one needs work. Let's go for these first. So this is my, this is one of the newest ones. This is probably like a couple weeks. Again, I've got some feathery moss in here very happy like super happy it's like lovely and green i put some liverwort in there i put it to the back well mostly to the back it's more in the mid ground because i know liverwort likes to kind of grow like a crazy thing this is like a lichen covered piece of bark again some more moss in here very happy yeah and it's new so there's no mole that showed up um it could it still could but it's nice and happy and I think it's okay yeah and no stowaways in that one and then this one is a little bit smaller this has a cutting in it I can't remember the name but I'll put it up on screen um, again I've kind of got some like the same kind of mosses in here this is a really interesting kind of moss um, keep on finding it like kind of close to like streams and stuff um yeah it's gotten really nice and like fluffy like um so it's i think it's got enough water in there got some like thinner star moss and some lichen in the front um i try not to make my lichen like too wet but yeah it's pretty happy in there And now for um, this one. Now this one, the cutting that I put in here, the Tredescantia, I think you say, is gotten really big. And also its roots are kind of like climbing over the rock in front. It's going to be really tricky to show you guys, but I'm going to need to cut that. But like the roots has kind of come out from it and gone over here where I'm pointing with the skewer. Um... There's some feather moss in here that doesn't seem too happy, but I'm thinking this feather moss is being um, shaded out by this, which is why it's probably not too happy because it's not getting enough sun, is what I'm going to say. There's some lichen in here. This is because you see there's some feather moss kind of in the front, and that seems pretty happy. This is nice and happy, more lichen. There's a bit of a there's a bit of mold. Um which again is to be expected for a new terrarium but I can see the springtails working in there so I'm not too worried so I'm going to have to trim it um, 
yeah oh there's a stowaway behind here but i'll get that when i trim it it'll be easier and there's like a branch that's kind of come out it's a bit squished because of the bigger one so i'll leave that branch in but i'll cut the bigger one back so let's do that now it's gonna be a bit tricky but i want to cut as low as i can as low as i can So I'm going to like use a skewer to kind of move things out of the way. It will be great to be able to cut like below the lowest leaf. But I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that just because um, just kind of because this root has already rooted itself like in the ground that's kind of like gone over the leaf. So I'm going to try to pull that up as gently as possible. I don't really want to like want to damage it too much it's kind of stuck itself in the moss whoa oh gosh look at that oh wow we got really far in okay so kind of went under the moss i hope you're seeing this it's really tricky to film um i'm hoping i'll like improve hey, filming my terrariums um Okay, so that root is out. Wow. Kind of picked up the moss as well. Look at that. Okay. Well, let's try to separate that moss once I take it out. Right. Because hmm. if I can cut underneath this leaf at the bottom, that would be perfect. But I need to make sure I don't cut that branch that's coming out because, well, then I won't have, really have a plant anymore. Um, and once I cut it, then I can put this in a pot because it does grow from cuttings. It's just trying to it's the acrobats, the acrobats, because it probably would, I probably could pull the whole thing out, but I don't really want to upset it too much. Ooh, underneath this leaf, I can kind of see an opening. Hmm. I know I can, I can see I'm freaking out the springtails a little bit. They kind of crawling around and freaking out. Okay, so that root is out. It'd be nice to cut underneath. I'm kind of worried if my scissors will be able to get in here. What I think I need is like a kind of a curved scissors, like a bit like a nail scissors, but like longer and it's got like a really nice curve, so I can get into like tight spots. So you see, it's like kind of rooted into the moss. What I did was I made a bit of a boo-boo and I shouldn't have put such a large cutting in, I don't think. Though it was a lot smaller when I put it in. So that's just to show how happy it was in here. Because it just, it grew like, the way it's touching the lid, it was, it was not close to the lid when I first put it in there. Okay, I'm just trying to separate that from the moss. So that when I pull it up, it doesn't take the moss with it. Okay. Because then I could put that in a pot and continue to get cuttings from it, which would be really good. Yeah, I could see a whole bunch of mould behind here. And I could take that lump of mould out. I might. Um, but the springtails are in there, so I'm not too freaked out by it. Okay, so got that. Hmm. Because... I can see like where the branch is coming up, so I think if I cut here, it shouldn't be too much of a problem. As long as I don't cut that branch, I think. Hmm. Just can the scissors get in here? That is the question. Oh, it can kind of. I got it. All right. All right, let's just put that on a paper towel. Okay. So the roots, it's got two nice roots on that, so it should be okay. And. What I'll probably do is I'll probably take off this bottom leaf so I can put it nice and deep in there. So we're just going to put that aside for now. I've got that moss I need to separate off. Okay. So you can see it's a lot emptier now. I just want to take this big leaf off because it's just it's squashing that small branch that's, com that's coming up. Okay. 
Okay, big leaf off. Okay. Piece right still way out. Okay, now maybe this feather moss should now hopefully get a chance. To kind of green up and get some light because they are i can see green spots on the feather moss and even the star moss looks unhappier than like in the others i think they were all just getting shaded out because like the um the big purple plant was getting like all the sun this like it doesn't look too good either i feel as if the mold has literally taken it out but i'm gonna leave that in there see what happens um yeah, a lot of stuff that looks happy in everywhere else doesn't look too happy in here. And I think it's because it just wasn't getting enough light. Okay, so I put everything back in. Um, I'm hoping what was struggling will improve. I'm going to give it a bit of a spritz. Again, not too much. It's so small that it doesn't need a lot. Um, right, I put like three spritz of water. And that should be enough, really. So now I can close that. And I can watch how it goes um yeah and hopefully that'll be okay and i won't have to like go in um and prune too much and then this now i've got a bigger plant to get cuttings from yeah so um i'm going to show you guys some like side views and stuff of the um jar terrariums so you can see the slight differences though there's not too much on these to be honest um there's just a new frond coming up on here oh i did forget to chip up that stuff that these um stowaways i came in and i can like pop them underneath this feathery moss i think that'll be a good cover
so i hope you guys enjoyed the video here's all the jars lined up i like how they all like look like a step um and yeah so i'm pretty happy with like how all of them are doing at the moment i would say this is probably the unhappiest jar terrarium but i think now that there's getting more light in it it should be okay but the others are doing really well um so far and i look forward to like how they're changing now these all of these are for sale and i will have a photo up of like their prices and um sizes and you can also go to a link in the description i'll have a little bit of information because at the moment um they're pickup only though by the time this video is out i would have hopefully done a test ship to see if i can ship the terrarium safely um but that would still be uk only I wouldn't ship them abroad if that's available so I will put up on screen whether shipping is now available as well as in the description and if not it's still pick up only um but I'm hoping it'll be a success and yeah so information will be down below in the description as well as a link so you can like just read up a little bit more information about them um I didn't want to clog up the description too much um and yeah so I'm super happy with the jar terrariums. I want to make more. Oh, I did make a large terrarium. I'll pop up a photo. You guys have probably seen the video already, but if not, again, I'll put an iCard so you can see it. Um, that's the largest build I've done. This is my grand to go into the garden. Um, and yeah, so I'll pop up a photo and the link to the video will be in the iCard. And yeah, loving the carnivorous ones can't wait to like kind of see how those change and the moss one i'm always looking forward to seeing what new changes the moss one has in store for me so i hope you guys enjoyed if you enjoyed please do give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already and click that notification bell i upload every friday um and yeah comment below which one is your favorite and do you have any terrariums or are you enjoying a bit of a house plant craze i've got succulents i've got terrariums and yeah it's getting out of hand and i'm loving it so thanks again for watching and i will see you guys next week bye